I get asked a lot about different companies that you can work with online to host your online classes. So we all know about Zoom, most of us know about Class In. Many of you may or may not know about the online uh, platform to host your classes on called Koala Go. I've done a few videos on Koala Go in the past and if you've seen these I want you to still watch this one because this one's going to show you the new Koala Go. If you haven't been using it or if you have and you're not really sure about all the features that it has, this is a video that you want to watch because I'm going to show you some of the things that I didn't show you in my last videos because they didn't exist. A lot has changed in the past couple of months. So welcome to my channel. My name is Jillian from Independent Teacher Academy. And on this channel, we talk about how you can earn an income as an online teacher working from home. If that's something that interests you, you want to learn how to apply to a company, different companies that you could work for, how to grow your independent teaching business, marketing strategies, different tools like this that you can use for your own independent teaching business, then make sure you give that subscribe button and that bell notification a little bit of love today. So I think I found out about Koala Go last year from another teacher. And I went to the creators and I was like, hey, let's talk about Koala Go. Let's have you on my YouTube channel. Let's see what it's all about. And I didn't really look into it too much. I like the element of surprise. So I didn't look into it too much when I did this first live. We're just super excited to, uh, to be, uh, to be launching it really, uh, on a wide audience. Oh, you guys have been working on this for a while then. This is not like a... not on this specifically, but, uh, on, on this problem, this problem of those of zoom boredom, a yeah. zoom boredom. So that is what Koala is for. It is to take away the zoom boredom and make more interactive classes for it's really we, we like to summarize it as like zoom for teaching kids <laughs> yeah zoom is not really built for kids it's built for enterprise um for companies so um, you know they really don't have the kids and the teachers in mind as much when they build zoom they really care more about people in, in suits and stuff um we care more about you guys and we care more about the kids so who is koala for so like i know that it's for like students is it for classroom brick and mortar teachers is it for online teachers is it for specifically yeah. esl teachers like who for, would, who yes yeah, for online tutors online tutors and oh. and to be specific for for kids that are from i don't know age four or five i guess all the way to 15 easily or more that's right. yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the sweet spot for Koala. Uh, 4 to 15 is where we see the most success. And it's usually one-on-one -on, -one on live, uh, sorry, one-on-one -on -one live online instructions or small groups. And I was very, 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 very impressed with it. And so much has changed. In this last interview we did, the creators um, had said that they were planning on expanding the playground, which and expanding a lot of things in Koala Go actually, which is something they have done and I'm going to show you that today. Since then, some of those changes have come to life. So make sure you stick with us to the end so that you can see what those changes look like and hopefully you get as excited as I did about it. Up Koala Go, it's like a kid-friendly Zoom and if you're used to teaching with like say like VIP Kid or Palefish or, or any of those uh, Chinese-based companies, um, they had in their own platforms, they had a stars reward system that you could give the students and a lot of built-in features where the kids could drag and drop things and Koala Go has attempted, they have successfully actually done, in my opinion, made these features part of a like a Zoom-like platform, if that makes sense. So you can go in there and the kids can drag and drop things. They can have that full interactive lesson that you're used to giving your um, your VIP kids students, for example. They can, you can give them stars in the classroom. And there are also some other cool reward systems. So you can give them little confetti, like woo, it's a party time. You can give them gems, which they can use in the big reward system, which is the playground. Uh, you can actually collect payments. There's curriculum involved. You can list your classes in their marketplace so that other students can find you. There's a lot of really cool things there and I'm gonna go over all of them. Before we get into it, I'm just curious who's watching this. Are you already using Koala Go or have you used it? If you could just quickly leave a review in the comments so that any other teachers watching this can kind of go through, scam through, read the comments. Okay, so here we're on the main Koala Go site and I'm just gonna open up the screen here. This is one of my students' classrooms. So we're working on typing, we're working on 
um, reading and writing. Um, when you want to invite a student, you're just going to click invite student and they're going to get the classroom code that you can share with your students and you'll just copy that and paste it. It'll be the same classroom code every single time. And I guess I can just turn this off here. Okay. So their videos will show up down here, like under, it says teacher, and then under that will be their videos. You can uh, create more slides. What I like to do for mine is I like to have a different, you go into activities, I like to have a different lesson for every student, right? So um, that way, and some of them I name the students' names. I really need to go through and, and name them all. But I like to have a different lesson for each of my students. So that way we can go in and I can be like, okay, I'm going to work on Renee's lesson today. So you can add different slides to it. So um, you see like the first time, you know, we were working on typing and she, she typed this out on the screen, which is really cool. And um, I was actually able to like just draw the, she couldn't find letters, so I was able to draw things in here for her. Um, you can go through and look at all the slides like this. You can add slides to it. So that way it's like different whiteboards and you kind of never lose um, what you're doing with your student, right? Um, you can give rewards to your students. So you can give dice. So you can roll a dice, a die. Okay, so you can you could roll the dice and this could be used for like a different game. You know, maybe you're playing a game. Maybe you want to see how many gems you're going to give them as a reward or anything like that. Um, you can give them stars. You can give them confetti. Um, you can give them gems. So I don't have any students to give gems to, but I'll show you the gems are actually something that you can use later on in the classroom um when you open up the big reward system which is really cool so there are a lot of different things here like you have a co-browser so if you want something um like like here's one that we're doing and this is a um this is my book creator which i've talked about before if you want to go into say book creator you can log into book creator on the co-browser and I don't need this. And then the students can go right ahead and you know, you're gonna open it. You're gonna give them control over here and then they can go right ahead and write their books out right on your screen. So this works really, really good for students who say are in China and don't have access to Book Creator. Um, you can go into um, Twinkle. And we you know we've talked about Twinkle before and the students will actually be able to come over and oops, got a lowercase that here. The students will actually be able to come over and do the activities on their own. They'll be able to click and type and all that. So that's what co-browsing is when you hear about co-browsing. It's really cool when you want to do, you know, different games. And again, I have a, another, um, I have another thing on Twinkle. If you want to look at that, I won't go into Twinkle too much, but Twinkle's really cool because if you want interactive games, you can go ahead and you can find interactive games. And like, here's a word search. And oh, that's a download one. I should have looked up interactive. But okay, so you want to go through and you want to, um, if, it's, if it says launch, it's an interactive one that you don't have to download. So you can go right in here and the students will actually be able to do all of the drag and drop activities instead of drawing a line like I have to do with a lot of my activities if I'm not using Koala Go. So like if I'm teaching on all school or out school or if I'm teaching on Zoom, a lot of times the students are not able to do the drag and drop activities. They have to draw a line. So that's really cool to be able to do this. So then if I click this little X up here, hopefully you can see it. There's, I can X out the co-browser. If you go in here, there is a marketplace. So go back to the main page, there's a marketplace. And I'll give you a direct link in the description box where you can see all of this stuff directly. So don't worry about that. But if you go to the link for the marketplace, you can find free activities. So say I want to do, I could do star images. Um, 
I want to do elementary school free um, co-browser. Okay. And I want to do uh, ESL literacy. Oh, ESL literacy. Um, so there's different things you can do here. So maybe I'm going to have them do... Here is an English game. Okay. So now the students will be able to do all of this, right? So here we go. Milk. So you have to find the milk, right? If you go into my activities, you can also get to the marketplace straight from here. So you'll open up the marketplace here and you can, you know, you can get to it right from there. Now there are activities that you can also pay for. So there's different things that you can do, but there's activities that you can pay for as well. The best part that I love the absolute most <laughs> is the playground. So we're going to go into the playground here. This is kind of cool. It's kind of, think of it like um, a Minecraft style thing. My students absolutely love this. So you can come in and you can uh, build, you can change your avatar, you can do different things here. So you go in, you can customize your avatar and I can make my avatar look completely different. Um, maybe I want her to have blue hair. Zoom in here. So she'll have blue hair, glasses and all these different things change their hairstyle. What the kids like the most about this is it's a lot like, say like Minecraft or Roblox, right? Where they can go through and, oh, I'm gonna have to jump over this. Oh, I'm going, oh, I'm going backwards. I'm gonna fall off. Ah, hold on, I'm turned around. Okay, there we go. First person view, there we go. <laughs> this is not like my forte here. So I'm going to go into Renee's house and you see she actually put her name up on her house. I'm going to go into her house and see what she's got going on. So far she's put a bed there and she's got some windows and a door. Maybe I want to go to school. She put up this big giant heart here, which is really cool. And while we we're doing it, I made a school. And I put my daughter there. You can put pictures there, too. So I put my daughter there. Um, so I can go into the school. And there's actually a second floor to my school. Now, I am not an expert on any of this. Um, I don't play these games. So hopefully I can... Ah, don't fall! <laughs> so I put a second floor to the school where there is a locker room and cubbies and over here there's a ping pong table and I mean maybe I just want to can I just jump off this now Ooh. looking through the window I can see that there's a playground I want to go play on the playground um, so I'm going to go out the road here we made a little road and ah Hold on a second. I'm going to take it out of first person view. I'm just going to have myself walk over here. No, 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 not over there. Okay, so there's swings and stuff. I put a picture here. Um, whoops. Again, I'm not like a tech expert when it comes to this. Well, I put a picture here of a playground. So, you know, there's more stuff on the playground. I've got monkey bars and I've got a slide and I've got swings. Um, just like in Minecraft, uh, if I run off, I'm going to fall into the abyss and just kind of like respawn. That's what it is, respawn. I know this for my kids playing. Um, I'm gonna go to top down view. Now your student can be adding things as they do this too. Um, you can go in here and the gems that they're gonna use, they can use like to say, say they're going to um, like Renee had chosen a bed, right? So she could like give herself any kind of bed that she wants. Um, I had, I have to use gems to do like the school stuff that I put in here. But for basic building, you don't need any gems. So say I wanted to build a house, it's literally like click, 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 right? The students love this. And if I want to erase it, I get the shovel out and I dig it out. If I want to make my board bigger, which I already made it as big as it can get, then I can go ahead and I can add the grass blocks, 
which I would normally add like, let's see if I can make it here. I would normally add the grass blocks like to the end here, to the end of the square, but I've already made it as big as I can. So when I started using this, I'm like, okay, well, what do I do for my other students? Well, the cool thing about this is that I can actually, I don't want to reset it. Oh my goodness. She would be so mad. I can actually go into my activities and say, I'm going to make a new activity and this is going to be a fake student. Okay. So say I have a fake student that's coming in here. This is my new student. I've never taught them before. It gave me a new playground. So it will automatically give you a new playground. Um, I have, if I go into my activities and if you create an activity like the Orton Gillingham one that I did and you create a new room like that it'll give you just literally a blank or you create a new if you make a new activity and you create a new whiteboard for it it will literally give you just a blank um board here and you can go through you can erase things you can make it bigger so i'm going to show you how you make it bigger you just go like this right oops okay that I keep putting it where it doesn't belong but that wall right there is so they don't fall off but sometimes we like to do things um, like we'll make holes in there so that the, the we make each other fall in or sometimes we like to um, block each other in in a box if you're used to Minecraft and you're used to that kind of thing then you've already seen something like this before but this is what the playground looks like and um, it's definitely one of my favorite things about the Koala Go program. The other thing is that when a student goes to log in, and I'm going to go ahead. This is what comes up when a student goes to log in. So what is the student's name? And I'm going to put, um, okay, so this is a test student, okay? Boop. So we're going to click on join as test student. My students like this, that there's this little game that they can play while they're waiting. If they have more than one student that you're teaching, so maybe you, the parent has more than one student, you can, um, they can change that as well. And then there is a parent profile over here, a parent portal that is coming soon with the scheduling and customization assignments, playground stories, the gem store, all of that. So the parents will actually be able to see different things that, um, it, it, that's going on in there. And then you can manage the profile. So if you have more than, um, more than one child, right? They can go through and they can say, okay, who is taking class today? So then when I log in as a teacher, click invite student. Okay. On the Koala Go site, you can sign up for a free account. You can go pro, which I highly recommend going pro if you're serious about teaching online because my students love this. It's definitely worth, it, it gives you something, it gives you an advantage to other teachers because you're doing something that other teachers aren't doing and the students will start recommending you all the time. You can go to the pricing here to see what it's like. So for Koala Pro, it's $21.99 a month which if you think about it, if you get one student, it's already paid for, but you can also do a free plan. So on the free plan, you get unlimited students. You can invoice. I didn't show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that too. Um, there is a 4.5 Koala Fee on invoices, whereas um, with Koala Pro, it's 3.5. Uh, with Koala Pro, you automatically get 300 gems per month that you can give to your students. You have ads. The ads are kind of annoying. Um, Koala Pro, there are no ads. Um, the free plan, there's a limited co-browser. I think it gives you like, um, maybe like, it gives you, I can't remember what it gives you. It gives you maybe like five or 10 minutes of co-browsing every 30 minutes. And you can have up to three activities, but you have unlimited activities with pro. You have 24 seven, um, support. You can add images in the playground. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that too. You're going to go to image library. Okay. 
and say like I put the playground here I can put this playground on any wall and you're gonna see it's really small so you'll just click on it and you can make it bigger so if I want this playground to be really 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 big I can do that and then um, you can actually go and and drag this as well I can make it on the whole floor but I could drag this around and I could if I made this wall bigger I could make it so that it was like up right so I can go ahead and I could I could make it the floor so I can change what the blocks on the floor looks like um, all you do to do that is you're gonna click on the add blocks or images and you're gonna go into image library and choose the image that you want to use there are sticky notes so you can add sticky notes so maybe you wanted to label this right and you're gonna label this playground so think of it like you have an elementary school class and you know how they will label different things around the class so they can learn the vocabulary. It's kind of like that. So you can put sticky notes around it like that. Or like my one student did, Renee, she had put Renee on there to label it as her house. Invoicing. If I want an invoice, I can go to send an invoice and I will just put in, so I'm gonna give myself an invoice. Um, okay, and I'm going to do, um, oops, okay, so $100. So you can do this two different ways when you do the invoice. You can, um, put the, the invoice, the, the payment amount on the end of their bill. So they're paying hundred dollars plus the processing fees so you can do it that way or you could pay the processing fees so you get less money so you can choose how to do this next it's going to connect it's going to um, you can fill out this information all right and if you have questions you can ask the different questions So if you're using WeChat Pay, you can ask, you can figure out how to do WeChat Pay. Okay. So then this is going to send over to your students and then they can pay, um, they can pay you for your lessons. If you want to list your lessons on their marketplace, you're gonna go to promote my class. So I have not done this and I think I'm gonna do this here, but in order to be approved with learnwithkoala.com, this is what you have to do. You're gonna to have to click the agreements um, and then you will pay a 10% fee. So say you're like that $100 of, of worth of lessons, I would have gotten $90 for it. I'll do a whole other video on how to do that once I start doing that myself. Oh, if you want to publish an activity, you can create this activity to publish. So if I wanted to make this activity available on the marketplace, which I did not create this, so I shouldn't, but if I wanted this activity to be available on the marketplace, then I could go ahead and just do it through publish activity. What I do when I'm out, so try not